Hi guys, and welcome back to F1 Fanatics. I'm Mike. And I'm Zach. Always that kind of trademark pause in there. Um, And our logo animation is always at the start in F1 Fantasy videos, because for some reason, editing the Skype recording is always a little bit dodgy. Uh, Anyway, so we are here. For an F1 Fantasy Weekly podcast, if this is your first time listening in. So basically what we do is we have a little rundown of the race. We talk through the points scored through it, affecting your fantasy team. So you can uh, compare scores. Me and Zach keep a track of our head-to-head as well. And then as we both love a good quiz, there's always some F1-related uh, quiz questions from the weekend just gone. And also Zach... Being stats like Zach, uh, he <laughs> okay, third one in a row, new one. Stats like Zach, uh, he gives us some race stats before. Usually, we look ahead to the uh, race going forward. But as we've got three weeks ahead in a distant future that has us F1 fans, you know, just mourning and longing for more f1 but we can't have it we've got to wait um what are we gonna do i don't know i don't know so that that probably brings in the first one for you guys who if you don't play f1 fantasy why not now i'm gonna hand you over to zach who is gonna give you a roundup of what f1 fantasy actually is F1 Fantasy is a great little game to play on the side while you're watching the race. So you have a one million budget, uh, a one hundred million budget, I should say, uh, where you pick five drivers. I know. Uh, Where you pick five drivers and one constructor each week, and you can swap them out, do some transfers, a bit like FPL for for football. and yeah, you can uh, try and compete against your mates. Like we do. Exactly. Well, I wouldn't quite call you a mate, but yeah. All right. Acquaintance. Gosh, geez, that, that, that got personal quick, didn't it? <laughs> uh, you know, we just. I, I went into this podcast believing we were friends. Looks like I'm one friend down, one less friend in the world, back down to zero. No, well... I've, got, I've, got, I've got Ash. Yeah. He, he he won't let me down. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to cry now. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to tell you about... What, forgot to tell me about what? Oh. Uh, that's an issue. Hello? Right, sorry about that, guys. Um, I obviously, you know, it got too emotional for me, Zach telling me my friend anymore, and we cut out. No, what actually happened is Zach, you know, was so keen for timekeeping we were actually ahead of schedule and he had set an alarm ready to record the podcast and it interfered with our call so it doesn't help to be prepared i think it's probably the lesson from that zach yeah well my mum always told me you can never be too prepared clearly she's a liar right so that's if you haven't found out anything about f1 so far guys you have found out that Zach is not my friend, apparently, and that Zach's mum lies. Well, hopefully someone in the comments will be kind enough to, to pick you up and befriend you. But don't get oh, your hopes up. Well, you can always hope, can't you? Right, we should probably, as this is F1 fantasy, oh God, should we talk about F1? Oh, let's talk about F1. So what is this, four races in a row now we've had? Some excitement, oh, some edgy seat action. And I did say it in the driver ratings. No hates. But uh, it was a great race. There was fantastic battle from Lewis and Max Verstappen in the top. But if we were grading them, it probably would come at the bottom 
of the really good races we've had in a row. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just below Silverstone. Yeah, there was just a oh. bit too much action from Silverstone. That you'd have to put it below it, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure if we if we, if we were putting it uh, at, yeah, right at the bottom and I was going to go Hockenheim, Silverstone, Austria. Okay. Interesting. What, what uh, you because I'm a big Max Verstappen fan, I'm probably biased, but I would have put Austria second. I see. Yeah. And Silverstone third. But no, you're you're probably right, yeah. Well, okay. All right. I'll concede well. to you on that one. Th- thank you, mate. Thank you. Um well sorry, chink we mate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, no, it was absolutely superb battle with Lewis and Max at the top there. Um just that's what we want to see. We want to see the best drivers competing at the top of the field and in in fairness there there was a little bit of action with the, obviously the Toro Rosso's racing Ooh, wheel to yeah. wheel which was that was amazing wasn't it great to watch that was that was proper proper exciting stuff that and uh, obviously everyone is glued myself on the drive right and highlighting the fact of Grosjean Magnussen look away that's how uh, <laughs> teammates race competitively but still show each other respect and don't put each other out the race oh are we being too harsh no no we're not no no not, that's, not harsh enough really that's how they do it the toro rosso boys yeah show them how it's done and, and you know what i loved about a fantastic it fantastic season yeah definitely but you know what i love the most about it not not a peep of complaints on team radio both both, uh, and he said Gasly then, he's not into a Ross anymore. Both Kivia and Album were both happy and, and understood it was fair, hard racing. Yeah, yeah, very true. Very true indeed. So it was, you know, that, that was nice to see. And unfortunately, Kivia obviously came out on top in that battle, but his tyres mm. dropped off a cliff with 15 laps to go, and he, he managed to finish 15th in the end, didn't he? He did, yeah. He lost uh, a couple of places at the end to uh magnuson and ricardo i think it was magnuson getting aggressive and uh ricardo followed him through so yeah poor race from kibiat after such a great one the week before yeah but i i suppose it was probably a bring back to reality moment wasn't it because exactly we yeah. all know that toro rosso isn't going to be competing for podiums every week um but yeah and mate the late overtake by Vettel on Leclerc but Leclerc kind of made it easy for Vettel so because he knew he had the quicker tyres so there wasn't really any action other than the great action we had at the front with Lewis and Max was there? Yeah and that wasn't even wheel to wheel action but not that I'm against it it's nice to see all kind of different kinds of things like this time out it was more strategy and just hard laps like qualifying laps how how i'm saying at the end it was it was like he did 15 qualifying laps at the end and to be that consistent and everyone like just one small mistake would have changed the outcome of of this race so yeah fantastic certainly was certainly was and i probably mentioned to carlos signs and kimi raikkonen who drove both fantastic races uh was talking to someone about it going you didn't see them all race other than when they got yeah. lapped <laughs> well, i don't I even know. think signs got lapped i think you all might have seen kimmy get lapped but yeah i mean signs has had one of the best races of the season uh finishing ahead of the red bull um which is well obviously max has shown strong on this circuit and <laughs> yeah he was nowhere to be seen but what a great drive and finish that was for him yeah absolutely amazing um and and we saw we heard it on the team radio at, at, at the end we heard the excitement singing that smooth operator again uh yeah just i think it's becoming a meme rather quickly both him and Lan. maybe he got jealous of like lando's milk yeah meme. Definitely. um so he he wanted his smooth operator meme. He's like, I, I can be popular too. Pay attention to Carlos. Oh, yeah. We love you, Carlos. You've 
You've taken over the man towards the Spanish driver from Fernando Alonso. Big boots to fill, but he's having a fantastic season so far. Definitely. Especially in the same team as well, actually. Yeah. It literally was filling Alonso's boots. Mm -hmm. And I've got I've got some great Carlos Sainz stats to tell you later. Um, So stick around for that. Oh, if that doesn't entice you to hang around through our ramblings, I don't know what is. Um, Exactly. But yeah, I I think we going back to Max and Lewis. I think we have to talk about what an amazing strategy call that was by Mercedes. I mean, I know they had nothing to lose; it was risk free. But still, to well, do was it, it wish free? Ex- was it? Yeah, because I know I know what you're going to say. But Lewis said at the end, he reckons he he still could have probably caught him, still could have caught Max without stopping again. So both being on the hard tires, well, which would have been interesting. Six laps. Well, especially as with the way that Max's tires dropped off. The question yeah. is that is because where I go with it, Max had to push his tyres because he knew he was coming. So then obviously when you push your tyres, you increase tyre wear, drop off. Where Lewis had to keep going forward and coming back, going forward and coming back and having to overtake on Hungary, which is difficult anyway. Um, Yeah. That I I was thinking about it. I mean, I'll probably me and Ash are probably go into more detail about it when we do the full race view. But I was going mm-hmm. if if they had pitted Max around about with 15 laps to go onto softs and kind of so obviously Hamilton was on mediums, quicker compound. Max's tires dropped off the cliff. There, Max was so good on the softs on the Saturday. If he had done it with like 14 laps to go at that stage, like the gap, I think was still 15 seconds. So would have come out five seconds or so behind him because the average pit stop was 20 seconds, chase him down and then get him on the quicker compound. Might yeah. have been a way to have counted I, it. I think you have it, a great point there because we saw that when, when Max did once, once, once the game was over and he did pit, uh, pit for softs just to get faster slap. His fastest lap was a 17-1, one minute 17-1, which Lewis's fastest lap, and we both know Lewis was giving it all he had. Lewis's fastest lap was 118.5, so what, nearly one and a half second difference just goes to back up your your yeah, uh, your theory there. Obviously, it's easy for me to say in hindsight when you got the pressure of oh, doing definitely. it, you, you make a strategy call and it's like. Do it. And obviously, I'm saying this just watching it as an F1 fan. They have so much data there that there must have been something uh, wrong to that stat. Maybe the soft wouldn't have lasted that many um, laps. I don't know. Um, yeah. Although, maybe maybe they were thinking although, Lewis would have Betten's to go. Although fire management throughout the race suggests that they yeah. would have done. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point again as well. Maybe yeah. the Red Bull was harder on its tyres because obviously Max had to pit earlier on the mediums than Lewis as well. True. Yeah. But anyway, we should probably, unless, is there anything else more you want to say on the race before we jump into some fantasy? Um, We haven't talked about Bottas yet, but but yeah, we can cover oh. that on, on, on fantasy. Yeah, poor old Bottas. We'll cover that on fantasy. Okay. Uh, so, right, yeah, F1 fantasy. So, um, stats with Zach. Stat, stat with Zach. Stack Zach. Stat, stats with Zach. Let's go with that. I think that was what I said. Anyway, uh, <laughs> give us give us our roundup. Who, who was the big winners and losers of the weekend? Well, of course, our top two, Hamilton and Verstappen, got 44 and 45 points a piece very tasty but the the third highest score so who got the who got the high oh, it was hamilton got the high yeah we'll wait and see because that's actually a quiz question for later so stick around for that sorry apologies um, <laughs> that's why i was a bit vague about that so we'll, we'll get we'll get to that so yeah um but the third 
third highest point scorer wasn't Vettel on the podium. It wasn't his Ferrari teammate either. It was, of course, Carlos Sainz, who got a huge 36 points for us. And if you turbo him... 72. Boom! And we Boom did indeed. say last weekend... Well, sorry, last podcast, we were like, who's your turbo driver got to be? It's got to be Carlos Sainz. And he did not disappoint, that is for sure. Nope, you couldn't have done better, because obviously you can't turbo Verstappen or Hamilton. So, yep, well, you, you are could, welcome you could have got to a to us. Right, yeah, I mean, you couldn't have turboed someone better. But yeah, oh. yeah, Carlos could have done better, yeah. Come on, Carlos. <laughs> Come on, Carlos, stop letting the team down. Uh. But yeah, so Sainz, 36 points. Then you got Vettel, 32 points. Uh, Leclerc, 25, not too bad. And Raikkonen, 22, very nice. Very happy with that. Um, and yeah, noticeable failures. Of course, you got Bottas, started P2, dropped down to P8, obviously finished after his incidents. Nine points for the Finn. Well, I mean, yeah, that hit me hard, although I got good points on Verstappen, signs the Bottas failure, which uh, I, I said wasn't really his fault. Yeah, I, I, know I, there's been, I know what you're saying. That it was a bit of, it was a racing instant, so mm, they, yeah. they both kind of were narrowing their lines and collided. I think it was an aerial helicopter view type of thing on Twitter going doing the rounds. Yeah, but why why was he so why did he struggle so much to get back through the pack? I know I know Hungary is a tough place to overtake, maybe I'm underestimating that, but looking at his lap times, he was nowhere near the pace of his teammate. And they had the best car at worst, the second best car. Right. On the um, track, I, he shouldn't have been staying behind Raikkonen or Pierre Gasly. But didn't he have to no. make another pit stop? Did he have to do a two stop strategy, um, Bottas? Uh, well, I don't know if he had to, but I, I suppose he did. I suppose because he, well, I think he, he had to... so early for the hard tyres. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that that case yeah so that and he, he was stuck behind Lando for a long time wasn't he? he did get him in the end but yeah Lando proving what a good weekend that McLaren had by almost definitely, finishing yeah. ahead of I mean he would have definitely finished ahead of him if he hadn't had that slow pit stop would he so right yeah exactly yeah and I... uh Speaking of pit stops, pit stops kind of saved Pierre Gasly because he was really struggling at the start of the race. And they had a fantastic stop, which I think made him effective because of Norris's slow pit stop. He effectively jumped two cars and he didn't really make any overtakes on track, Pierre. So that really bailed him out, really. Uh, yeah. They really are doing everything for him. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh... Pierre, give us something. Uh, yeah. Your request is pending. <laughs> do you think, real, real quickly on Pierre Gasly, do you think his time's up? I, I know all the comments from uh, Helmut Marco I, I sound like he's, he's uh, and Christian Horner, sound like he's sticking around for the end of the season. I just wonder, I just wonder if we might get some news soon. I think he will, I know it's, I think, he won't be in that seat next year. I think they oh, might have really not, made that no. decision. But I think they will almost suck it up and deal with it this season. I mean, finishing third and second is massive to them. And they are only 40-odd points off Ferrari now, aren't they? I think. 44, I believe. Yeah. So... Obviously, they would like to do it, and but I think they probably look at Daniel Kvyat and Albon, and 
Albon again is too much of a risk to bring on halfway through the season in his rookie season. That would be completely unfair on him, and yeah, because would have exactly the same pressure as Garsley, and at least Garsley had a full season under his belt before coming in, and then obviously Kvyat. He had his woes at Red Bull before, but he probably would be more consistent. But it still is a flip of the coin. Also, mid-season to get him to change in a car that he hasn't tested. Blah, blah. I know they could probably do some work over the summer break if they did announce it, say, like tomorrow. So, I mean, but I think they will suck it up, deal with it end of the year. And they, they'll also have better options in the close season if they don't go for Kvyat and Album. And they break their Red Bull drivers' mould. Could you see them maybe? Well, obviously Alonso's name is thrown about, but I doubt that. Nah. Maybe, maybe uh, I feel he's burnt too many bridges. But if they sat down and sorted things, maybe a Danny Rick could be on the card because he's a Red Bull driver. Imagine that. There is a bit of talk flying around, but. And then, third one would probably be looking if they could buy out Carlos Sainz at McLaren if he continues this. That that would be a tasty one. I'd love to see that, but it's going to Because he was, he was a Red Bull driver before they let him go. He started oh, off. I know, yeah. Side for Stafford. How they so. regret that. So, you see, close season, they've got more options. Yeah, no, so I understand that, that yeah. I feel like they'll, they'll stick it out. They don't want to be rushed into it like they were last year because of Ricardo's unexpected move. Yeah, I reckon though, if album, if it was album that got the podium at Hockenheim, and if it was album that was consistently being Kvyat, I reckon they might have made the switch. Yeah, but I still think they might. They might. They might do something this this week. But that's just me. I've, I've got nothing to back that up. That's just a wild prediction from me. Gut feel. Gut feel. Sometimes exactly. Right, back yeah. to the point. So we were on, we were on Bottas struggling. Yeah, not so be fancy players this week. Bottas, mm-hmm. Bottas just All annoying guards, points. It wasn't great. Well, actually, you'd okay. think that you'd think that, but we mock him on track. But on fantasy, Gas Gasly's not the worst option. Obviously, he's, he's always going to struggle to beat Verstappen. Another race finishes a whole lap behind Verstappen. But on fantasy, he scored 17 points just because he qualified P6 and he stays P6. So it's a handful of points. So so 17 points, not bad. He is a lot more expensive than other drivers, but 17, it's, it's fine. It's a fine score. <laughs> I mean, you are trying really hard to convince yourself. It, it's fine. Yeah, yeah no, fine. <laughs> Ob- it, obviously, it's... it's poor from... Uh, from a racing perspective, but from a fo- Formula One fantasy perspective, it's okay. It's, it's fine. Yeah. It's like when you're trying to really convince yourself that you're okay when you're like, I'm okay. Yeah. 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 It's like that are, you, it, are you doing your Pierre empire? impression? Is this this is what Pierre's feeling right now? I feel I, I'm okay. Yeah. No. That's a, yeah. I'm okay. I just had no grip. Yeah. I'm fine. Oh, no grip. No grip. Mate, <laughs> mate, when I saw that, when he said. I was struggling for grip. I'm like going, mm, when you're yeah. doing as bad as you're doing, I would just really be quiet and just be like, need the summer break, go away and think, rather than trying to blame the car at all. Yeah. Oh. Not the best idea, Pierre. Anyway, we're spending too much time on Garsley. Lee, Garsley's gone. He's Okay. okay. He's okay. Last last two to talk about. So we we talked about Kvyat having having struggles in the race after some good tight action with Album. Um, he only scored one point this weekend. Pretty disappointing if you own him, but mm, not as disappointing as of course Roman Grosjean who got minus eight. But you wouldn't have him in your team anyway, would you? So no. I mean, what what is your take? I mean, as an F1 fantasy player. You wouldn't touch him with a barge pole because he's got out of 12 races, he's DNF six of them. <laughs> so I, I don't think you can play a gamble of, oh, 
And he's only finished in the points, I think, maybe twice out of those races that he has finished. So in terms of a point scorer, you can't go, oh, Grosjean, he's going to be my steady guy. But is he the unluckiest man in F1? Because I was talking to my brother about this and he had a water pressure issue with his car. When's the last time you heard of a car having like oh. a water pressure issue? It's like, yeah. if there's something that could go wrong in Grosjean's car, it will go wrong. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do got to feel for him at, uh, when when things like that happen because that is just just bizarre. Yeah, but but yeah, as you as you said, you just can't have him on fantasy because he is so unlucky. But that would normally make you think, okay. Should I go for his teammate then? Because his teammate's always going to beat him. But that's not the case because because Grosjean, when he doesn't have troubles, when he keeps it clean, he has pace. We all know that he does have pace, and that's why he keeps getting a seat every year. Um, so just looking at the head-to-head stats, qualifying Magnussen seven to five head-to-head against Grosjean, and race six to five against Grosjean because they had one double DNF. Um, so yeah, Magnussen is beating him but that's purely because of of the dnf really yeah magnuson so you... just went and it was another race where magnuson could have easily um dnf'd in that race he was he was racing hard and defending hard that could have easily gone wrong i, I i'm actually gonna say i i don't think the ricardo incident where ricardo was obviously unhappy was it was close to the line, but it wasn't like anything mm. legal. But you, you go and you're going. We've already got one DNF. Magnuson finished the race. <laughs> this we're in desperate need. We're not getting points, but we need this data to kind of <laughs> improve the car. Please don't do anything stupid. Fighting for like fourteenth and thirteenth. Yeah. I, well, to be honest, I was kind of rooting for some carnage just just to see George Russell go up go up the ranks and try and fight for a point or something. But no. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. But yeah, yeah, no, not for Haas, not for Haas. I, I think yeah, Rose is one of those nice. drivers who needs a change of scenery. But the problem is, would he get offered an, another seat with how things yeah. have gone up? Also? Because he's, he's tarred with that brush. He was a very hopeful driver when he entered Haas. But yeah, it's gone... It kind of really gone worse for him there, I'd say. Yeah, he's got a, a big second half of the season, hasn't he? Certainly does. Even if that's just to convince someone else to pick him up. Mm-hmm. Um, right, right. So that was, that was our main point. Um... Should I give you some stats? Yeah, give give me some stats. All right, let's do the race in numbers. I did the race in numbers last week. I, I give you a little countdown from 10 to 1, a little stat on each number. Okay, so 10. Uh, 10 more Hamilton wins, and then he will overtake Michael Schumacher's famous record of 91 career wins. Impressive. Yeah, yeah, impressive. I'll tell you what, now. you're not going to bet against him, are you? No, definitely not, yeah. I can see him doing that for sure. Do you reckon there's anyone out there who would have, when Hamilton started his career, maybe put on a drunk bet where it's like, this Lewis Hamilton is going to be a world beater. He's going to beat all of Schumacher's records. You just watch. Yeah. His dad, his dad, maybe. But... Yeah, yeah, maybe like five and a bet, and they're like sitting on a bet that will come in at like fifty k or something. Um, having broken all Schumacher's records, I'm not entirely sure it would have been that much, but you know what I mean. Yeah, that that would be crazy. I, I'd love to see that. <laughs> that did happen. That has happened. Yeah. So that's ten. Uh, nine. It's the ninth race this season bear in mind we've had 12 now ninth race this season Grosjean finishes without points oh. Oh, I mean 9 out of 12 oh Roman that, that half car yeah 
That's that's damning. It is, isn't it? S1 Fantasy, top tip, don't pick Grosjean. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Uh... If you hadn't figured that out, probably shouldn't be playing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, go, we'll go quickly on from that negative to a nice positive. It's the eighth time Carlos Sainz scored or well, finished in the points this season. So, eight out of 12. Absolutely and considering fantastic. Three were DNFs. So, only having yep. one drive where he finished outside the points. Good point, good point, yeah. That is, that is really impressive. Incredible consistency there. Yep, uh, I could use a lot. Of, uh, yeah, 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 Seb, yeah keep keep rolling out the stats. I could have used a lot of stats for eighth. Uh, of course, Bottas finished P8, which is unusual for him. Uh, Hamilton, that was Hamilton's eighth win of the season, eight out of twelve. So consistent. You were talking about that on the uh, drivers' rating ratings video. Brilliant stuff. Uh, that was seventh. Uh, for Kimi Raikkonen for the third time this season. How impressive that is, considering he's in the Alfa Romeo now. I but mean, then again, you expect nothing less from him, really. He, he is just such a good driver. I mean, we love Kimi. We love Kimi here on the F1 Fantasy uh, podcast. That's why you guys should stay tuned in for our F1 Kimi moment of the weekend. Absolutely. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, cheesy pitch in there. <laughs> yep, keep plugging, keep plugging the little topics we've got coming up. Oh, Kimmy. Oh, friend. <laughs> Kimmy, friend. Ooh. <laughs> right, uh, let, let's continue. Stats. This this has been a slow stat router. Slow stat router, yeah. The stats and, like, and we're now on number six. Yep, six, six places. Speaking of slow, six places. Bottas a loss this race. Started P2, finishes P8. Very frustrating day for him. Uh, it was also the fifth time Verstappen has been voted driver of the day. This is an interesting one. What did you think about that? I would have given it to Lewis. Would you? Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if you'd say you'd give it to Lewis or Carlos. But I mean, you... I think Lewis or Carlos, you can say. Carlos, yeah. I, Lewis, I just think um, the absolute incredible feat. And I was having the argument with people. Uh, argument's probably a strong word. I went like, what are you saying? <laughs> I, I was having a conversation with people about it. Um, going, look, just, just because Lewis Hamilton makes something look easy because he's that good doesn't mean that it's easy. I was talking uh, to my brother about it and going, and we both agreed, if that's any other driver, I don't think they catch him. Yeah, no, no, I actually really because agree Because they with were that. 20 flawless qualifying laps back to back, pushing yeah, and pushing, insane. and also not absolutely destroying his tyres so that when he got there, he could just cruise past rather than being like, well, I've got here, but now my tyres are buggered. Yeah. So Hamilton, yeah, perhaps should have won driver of the day there because he That's really the took yeah. that car to the limit. So, yeah, how how I rated it was Lewis was 10 out of 10 and Max was 9 out of 10 because Max would have won the race. This is incredibly harsh, but these are the levels of it. He wasn't able to make his tyres last, and so that stint where he pitted six laps before Lewis actually cost him the race because yeah. he was able to stay out those six laps longer than he would have been able to. His tyres wouldn't have dropped off the cliff when they did and he Lewis would have run out of laps. So that that's, like I said, incredibly harsh, but that's why I wouldn't have given Max drive for the day because it was a small fault, but a fault that cost him. Yeah. And perhaps if Carlos Sainz got more screen time, perhaps he would have won driver a day. Who knows? Uh, perhaps, but we we didn't see any of Carlos's race, so we have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good point. Did Carlos okay. actually race? Or was it like a cardboard cutout just going around? <laughs> hey, Carlos, 
I was just sat having an ice cream somewhere. Yeah. Ooh, good race, this. <laughs> Other than lap one, I'm not sure we've really got any footage of him, really. No. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, next stat. We spent a long time on five again. Four. <laughs> Four, four drivers from four different teams were lapped twice. So that was Giovinazzi, Stroll, Russell and Kvyat all lapped twice by Hamilton. And I think Verstappen as well, but we'll just we'll stay with Hamilton just to make sure I've got that one right. Same. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm convinced it's both, but I, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it is both because they were chasing down... The Ferraris, weren't they? So. Yeah, imagine that. If they didn't pit, I know they would have been slower towards the end, but if they both didn't pit for whatever reason, um, I reckon they, could, they would have lapped the two Ferraris and it would have just been them two laughing, laughing the whole track. It just goes to show how hard they were pushing it. I absolutely love it. For for an advanced F1 fantasy rules, when it, in fact, you get minus points for every time you're lapped. <laughs> that would hurt you bits. Of, that would hurt you bits of heavily. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if if people were deciding definitely not to pick Robert Kubica in their team, <laughs> I mean, it, it would be interesting because obviously those people who went early doors, Bottas, um, Hamilton, Mercedes, but had to have Kubica in their side to make it work. Mm. Yeah, that would have punished. He them. would have been punished for obviously those extra points you got. But punishing yeah. them for that, that would have been interesting, actually. You know, you know what, I really, I really like that dynamic. Also, you get points for your driver lapping cars, so the top Ooh. guys get more points as well. And, yeah. last one, you get points for being driver of the day. Fastest lap gets yeah. five points, so let's say three points for driver of the day. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Or even like a Perfect bonus day. system. Bonus system F- like like FPL, so three yeah. points two two and one for like what? Tri- good triple performances. Captain. Here we go, <laughs> triple driver, bench boost. I mean, I suppose the uh, turbo driver every week is that, but yeah, true. Um, yeah, that whoever makes F on fantasy games, sign us up. We are the ones. Don't just I suppose they could just listen and steal our ideas for free though. To be fair, not that we're we are preaching. We would make this game so great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. There's, there's probably a reason we're not in kind of jobs like these. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea why, though. Oh. All right. Are, are we still on the stats roundup? Because yeah, we, yeah. Re- really quickly. Things. Okay. Is okay. It, it's three, two, one. Yep, three, two, one. So it's the third time in five races that Signs has beat Gasly on track. Uh, two pit stops from Hamilton after a great, brave strategy call, but we already touched on. And lastly, <laughs> one minute again, we touched on this as well, but there was one minute plus behind the leader for both Ferraris, despite being in third and fourth. Which crazy, never thought I would have said that coming into this race. Right. Yeah, wow. I mean, I was, I remember talking about it on my uh, quality reaction vid, and I was going, right, hungry. You know, the place to overtake is is that first sector, and the Ferraris look lightning quick in that first sector. Yeah. You know, they don't rule them out of the race. Well, that became quite apparent after lap one that you could rule them out of the race, because <laughs> their race pace in the sector two and three was so poor. That uh, they were just they were having a nice country drive, weren't they? They were, they were. It was nice, easy going for them. Really. I tell you what, you could, you could have stuck a camera on the dashboard, and they could have been vlogging that guy, <laughs> just just around and go. Oh, here's turn four again. Oh, this is this is the fiftieth time I've seen this today. <laughs> I would, I would really enjoy some Seb block Seb. Uh, Seb blogs. That's a tongue twister. Yeah. Oh, they. It would be. I mean, it'd be good, certainly. But I think we asked drive. I think the drivers get asked to do a hell of a lot. If they suddenly got turned around, 
Like, you know that thing you were doing where you went to just concentrate? Can you also, just so we so we connect with the fans a little bit more, can you can you vlog it? What do you, what do you mean, can I vlog? No, I've got to concentrate on the race. I'm having team radio discussions, and I'm, I'm not going to talk through the race as I'm driving it. Yeah, but, you know, it'd be a really good fan thing to have. I don't care. They're seeing the race. Don't get greedy. <laughs> team radio, it's team podcast now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Unbelievable. Your two-hour podcast from Sebastian Vettel every week. <laughs> Brilliant. Number one. Number one. Grazie, grazie, grande. <laughs> Bless him. He's, he's reasonably good at Italian now, is it? I mean, he has to be in it Ferrari, but... I think it's all right. Certainly better than my Italian. Bonjour. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastico. <laughs> that was not Italian at all. <laughs> right, let's move on. Yeah, that, that was it. <laughs> it's a me, a Mario. <laughs> there you go. That's Italian. Oh, Woo. brilliant. Woo-hoo. Right, so stats have finally rounded up. I think we've probably eaten that out for about 10 minutes. Cool. Uh, yeah. For a three-out period, we apologise. Um, yeah, it, that lasted about ten minutes. So I, I was, mm, I was going to say you could have just skipped through it if to the point, but now you've listened to it all. So I guess the damage is yeah, done. Damage so, is truly really done. That time of your life that you're not getting back. Um, hope you're still enjoying. Yeah, we're having fun. Yeah, we are having fun, but I'm not sure I'm going to be having fun for the next segment because it's time to discuss our head-to-head. Oh, we were really cute this week, weren't we? We were cute. We were too cute, yeah. So cute. Uh, One nine, Zach? One nine nine. what was it for you? Well, it was 209. Right. No, but, that, but I took what? a minus 10 hit, didn't I? So? So, yeah, 199. Brilliant. Equal score. How nice is that? Told you. Yeah. You've you copied to get my past team. Me once ahead. What do you mean I copied your team? You no. copied my team. We've got the exact same team except one driver. I've got Raikkonen and you've got Ricardo. You Even they've got my... similar names. <laughs> you copied my team. What? Why does it have to be I copied your team? Because, yeah, you're probably right because I'm the one that took a 10 point hit. Yeah, exactly. You see? Look at you. Try to Dug the my blame. grave there. You're the one who had, because of streak, streak, streak um, addiction, who had like Vettelwin at Silverstone before he died <laughs> of space destruction derby with the back of Max's car. Right, you need to leave my streak addiction alone because the two it's streaks a real that I got... <laughs> it's a real problem. Yeah. Uh, I, no, I say two streaks. I, got, I scored three streaks. I scored three streaks this week. There were only four streaks available, and I got three of them. Yeah, four. That's I'm sure. Impressive. I'm in fact saying that though. Uh, you you got them as well. Of so course. Carlos Sainz, yeah. Carlos Sainz race streak ten points. Verstappen qualifying streak five points, and Mercedes qualifying streak five points. Brilliant. Yep, exactly the same. Got that. The last one you could have had was a Red Bull Constructors five points for qualifying. Right. Sorry. So it wasn't actually possible to get four out four. No, you can get four out four. So we did the best that we could. So go yeah. us. Whoa, go us. The streaks have paid off, guys. We've Finally. Three and the streaks have paid off. We don't lie to you guys. We actually genuinely help you in F1 fantasy. The streaks are real. Yep. You should all now be streak freaks that, with me. Uh, yep. <laughs> yep, that's good. Yep. <laughs> uh. Right. Um, yeah, so 199, um, which I believe, Zach, we will put that up nice and in big letters on the screen for you. I am still in the lead because we start this head to head from last week. Uh, one point to me. From last week, which I uh, smashed because you were in minus points with the Hockenheim chaos. Yeah. Uh, and nil, 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 quoi? 
little bit of French for you because you're Red Bull, Pierre Gasly. Big fan <laughs> over there. Huge Zero. fan. Zero. Zero. God, I'm, I'm actually fluent. Look at this. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, just going to get loads of comments saying terrible French accent. Funny, funny story. Uh, uh, last time I was in France and I said bonjour to a French person, uh, they they said hello back. So I, <laughs> my, my attempt was clearly that poor that they were like, let let's not bother with this. Yeah, this let's not go easy. down that road. Yeah. If I just speak English. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. Well, it's, it cuts me deep. <laughs> right um it's that that probably rounds up the f1 fantasy points thing is there is there any one else we need to really mention of note did we mention kimmy uh yeah we mentioned kimmy did albon do okay i guess not really because he only yeah, gained no. two he did okay yeah he, he scored 13 points Oh, ticked on nicely. That's, not, that's nice for his value. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely oh, fine. Oh, considering um, Kibiat got one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good. What about the ever so Mr. Consistent George Russell, who obviously had an absolutely superb race? Yeah, so this was a bit uh, frustrating for Russell owners, like my dad. My dad was rooting for him all race, but bit disappointing because you don't get any extra points for qualifying 15th than you do say say 19th his his big positive was the fact that he started 19th and always inevitably made up places yeah exactly yeah he's gonna start in places he's just like the rest of them yeah so he qualified p16 got promoted to p15 because of uh, a grid penalty for Giovinazzi. And then he finishes the race at P16, despite an amazing first lap. I don't know if you've seen it on the F1 YouTube channel, the top 10 on board zone, just posted it a couple of hours ago, as to Ooh, when we're recording this. I'll give, but, I'll give that a watch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely great first lap from George Russell. Um, but yeah, sadly, the pace of the Williams can't keep up full race. So he finishes P16. So he only oh, got six points. But they get in there. It's progress. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, they're definitely progressing. No one can deny that. So, yeah. And George Russell is getting the best out of that car. He, he is, I'm really excited for George Russell's future. Yeah, me too. Me too. And he's and he's a lovely bloke. Yeah, he does come across real nice, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. He, under, he understands the... PR side of things and that he makes a lot of time for the fans as well so yeah I saw the absolute strangest comparison ever I, I to be fair I need to go and read back it uh, read back it read um, go back and read it mm-hmm. and on the official Formula 1 they were like someone had written an article going uh, is George Russell the next Fernando Alonso? I mean, I don't know what angle they were taking on this, but I, it's I don't just know. Clickbait, really, isn't it? Well, yeah, but it's I don't really know where where you make that. I don't know who goes. So Carlos Sainz, you could maybe go because they've at least got a Spanish link. Maybe look vaguely similar, sort of similar hairstyles. You could go. Is is he in that Alonso Martin? George Russell, what? What makes someone go in the room going, No, you remind me of Fernando Alonso. <laughs> Everything about you. You you are the next Fernando Alonso. Oh thanks. Here's for that. Just yeah, I struggle to see any comparison there. I I guess it's just a compliment, Fernando Alonso being a being a world champion. I guess it's just that that's the only link I can I can say you but uh, yeah, just looking at what, George's make, potential. English link um, next Lewis Hamilton. I mean that that's bold. Uh, that, that I, I don't bold, agree. I yeah, I don't agree with them um, in terms of uh, always labelling someone the next so and so. It's just yeah, it's, I feel like it's just stupid. I mean, they didn't really do that with Max, did they? I mean, I know Max is a protege talent, but 
and we just literally like this kid's great Max Verstappen and to be fair as a large whole it's been these generation of rookies are great blah 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 like Lando Norris is just not compared to anyone um but yeah I was just like what yeah confused, mate confused was the word no idea where that's come from right and so guys we will try and stay on track. We so we have covered um, what F one fantasy actually is. We have done our roundup kind of of the race. We've talked about the top scorers in the F one fantasy for those mm-hmm. top players. We've talked about our teams. So I believe Zach that that leads us on to quiz time. Quiz time. Yes. Oh yeah. The drum roll has returned as well. We love a good <laughs> Okay, are you ready to play? My I version am. of true or false. Box, 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 or box, box, bollocks. I mean, if nothing else, the name is brilliant. Thank you, thank you. I think it is the, the most fun part about doing the podcast and and uh, planning it all is thinking of these names. <laughs> I've got a new one for next week. I'll tell you that at the end. Oh, God, stop it. <laughs> God, right. can, it can this get better? I feel like I'm watching the races, like going, oh, can Silverstone get any better? Hungary. It's like, can the quiz names get better? Oh, box, box, bollocks. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Question number one, then. So oh, after... Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Right. Oh. So, guys. For you new guys listeners who don't understand, this is basically a true or false quiz. But yeah. obviously with the famous box, 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 that would be true. And box, box, bollocks would be false. Anyway, yeah, Zach, well, over well to said. You. So, for instance, quiz. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask my questions like, did Lewis Hamilton win the race? Obviously not that simple, but did Lewis Hamilton win the race? Box, you... box, box. Correct. Well done. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> Gold star for you. Okay. Yay! Re- I can add it re- to my chart. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for the real question. Okay, so number one. After his sixth DNF of the season, Grosjean's overall total fantasy points, this is, we're talking strictly fantasy points, Grosjean's total overall fantasy points is now in the negative. Oh, well, he has only had, um, what was it, three points scoring? Yeah, absolutely no shot. He is in the negative because he has had some big minuses. So box, box, box. That is correct. He's actually oh. only in a negative minus 12. It was, he was already in, in the negative because he only scored minus eight this week. Sorry. <laughs> but he's still Sorry. in the negative. So I let's leave him a little bit. Oh on twitter that max has got 357 you're now like going i mean (laughs) but he's only got minus 12 i suppose on the scale of things (laughs) yeah that that is that is clutching at optimism too yeah max (laughs) (laughs) oh dear okay so correct well done one out of one so far question number two so we already s- discussed that the Stappen got voted driver of the day. Carlos Sainz, however, is still yet to be awarded driver of the day this season. What box, do you box, think? Box. You're saying uh, box, box, box? Not being awarded driver of the day, surely. That would be crazy, but he's, he's been so consistent. So many great, great finishes, so many great races. Yeah, surely, but... surely he's got driver of the day. No, Carlos you're right. The... Ghost. Yeah, exactly. Two out of two. That was box, box, box. Well done. Yeah, as we as we discussed, Sky's coverage of the midfield has been a little bit suspect at times this year. Yeah, yeah, sadly. Okay, okay. question number three, three then. Three. This was the first time this season we had Hamilton, Verstappen and Vettel on a podium together. Is that box, 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 or is that box, box, box? Think about this one. Oh, I'm trying to think. Who finished on the podium in Canada? 
Mm. I think that might have been Bottas. Ooh. I'm going to go box, box, box. I think this is also true. You're saying box, box, box. You're saying three trues in a row. Surely I wouldn't. I have. You're right. If that was box, box, box. First time this season we've had the first driver for the top three teams all on the podium, Hamilton, Verstappen and Vettel. Correct? Still 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, question number four. So, Verstappen versus Gasly and Russell versus Kubica have the best, so we're focusing on Verstappen and Russell, have the best head-to-head record versus their teammate for races this season. So if, if you're confused there, I'll go over that again, because it's a bit of a bit of a complicated one, this one. So Verstappen and Russell have, have the outraced best. their teammate. They've got the best records throughout the grid. What do you think? Box, box, box. You're saying box, box, box again? Eh, eh, that is box, box, bollocks, I'm afraid. Who, who's got a better one? Is it Kimmy? Well, I'll t- yep, it is Kimmy. Kimmy has outraced uh, Antonio Giovinazzi 11 to 1, whereas Russell has only got oh, outraced Russell's... to bits at 10 to 2. Yeah. Yeah, that was a sneaky one. And, and a tricky on that one. It's Verstappen on the one as well. Verstappen 11 to 1 as well, yep. Oh, that is as soon as as soon as you went eh, eh, I thought Alpha. Oh well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You win some, you lose some. I've got you on that one. Bollocks. <laughs> okay, and last one for box 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 or box box bollocks. Number five, Sergio Perez scored seventeen points this weekend. That's true, I'll tell you that now. Uh for Formula One fantasy, obviously not not seventeen. Uh, driver's points. He scored 17 points in Formula 1 Fantasy, taking him above George Russell's overall tally. What do you think? Oh. So his total score for the season, is that... Perez, Perez has got a lot of points. He has, he has. Can confirm. Russell, Russell also does, but I don't think he has that much because I think Perez is also been beating Stroll fairly consistently. Ooh, I'm going to go with box, that. box, box. For some reason, I'm, I'm, it's all true. <laughs> it's all true. Well, that's not true. You went that's box, me. box, bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> George Russell is the ninth highest scorer out of the 20 drivers on Formula 1 Fantasy with 137 points. Perez is now 10th with 126. So he's only nine points behind him, to be fair. But sorry, no, eleven points behind him, to be fair. But he is still behind him, so that is bollocks. Absolutely, it it is bollocks, Zach. I agree. <laughs> so that's three out of five so far. Right now, we'll go on to the quick fire quiz if you want. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. quick fire. Let's go. Quick let's fire. Go. Okay. Ding, ding. Who? What driver has the most fastest laps so far this season? Oh, good question, but it's Lewis Hamilton. Eh, eh, Max Verstappen. No. Really? Yep, Lewis Hamilton has two, Verstappen now has three after recouping oh. that, that race race. Yep. I knew Vettel had picked up one, and... No, it's because, obviously, Hamilton had got those close ones, and he, he almost beat Vettel when he had, like, stupidly old tyres. But yep. Hamilton only got Silverstone and somewhere else. Was it Bahrain? Something like that? I can't tell you where, but I can tell you the figures. Verstappen, three fastest lap. Hamilton and Bottas and Leclerc all on two. Also on two, surprisingly, it's Pierre Gasly. Earlier on in the season, he was uh, in that sixth place and had enough time to pit box and the softs and, and get the fastest lap. Yeah. And fit. Vettel just on one. Okay. Anyway, anyway, supposed to be a quick fire quiz, and we took way too long on that. So let's jump yeah, straight back anyway, into it. Sorry, my fault. Bang, let's go. Who now has more points between Carlos Sainz and Pierre Gasly? Sainz finishing above Gasly again. Fantasy. Who are we saying? 
for driver championship points. Yep, driver championship points. Well, well done for clarifying that, not Formula 1 fantasy points. Right, driver championship points. It is Pierre Gasly because Sainz is five points behind, which is incredible still, but yeah. Yep, yep, you are absolutely correct. Well done. Uh, how many... Now, this is a tough one. Well, I'll, gi- I'll give you a bit of time for this one because it's, it's not necessarily a tough one, but it takes, it, takes a bit of, it takes a bit of thinking. So I will give you a bit more time. So this is the slow, <laughs> slow fire quiz um, or slow fire question. How many different F1 pole sitters do we now have in this season's grid after Verstappen getting his first pole on the Saturday? Good, yeah. We have... Do you want to count them through for us? Lewis. Yep. Bottas. Yep. Stephen, Vettel. Yep. Leclerc. Yep. Aikonen. Yep. Kibitza. Yep. There's more. It's up to you. You tell me. No, I think that's it. Seven. You think that's it? Seven? Did we count seven there? That that was seven there. Yeah. That was seven. Um, I wrote down nine, but I can only remember more one more, so maybe it's eight. Anyway, regardless, you've got it wrong. Hulkenberg <laughs> got one, two thousand and ten. Oh, of course he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Danny Rick would have got one as well, wouldn't he? Oh, Danny Rick, that was the ninth one. So I've not, I've not got that wrong yet. Danny Rick as well. So you got that wrong. Eh, eh. Eh, eh. How could I forget yeah. Danny Rick? I suppose he's having a season to forget. That's why. Yeah. I forgot for right. the Renault boys. Yep. Okay. Quick. Back to quick fire questions now. <laughs> Question number four. Other than the top six drivers, so the two Ferrari, Mercedes, and Red Bull boys, other than the top six drivers. Who has won Driver of the Day awards this season? Other. Oh. That's this is a real tough one here. I just didn't want you to get it perfect, but you've already you've already messed up some very yeah. good at that. Oh, right. So so there is <laughs> there is someone, is it? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll help you out. There's two two different drivers. Oh. Right. Um it hasn't been cast so. I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet, We've already bet, established bet. it's not Carlos Sainz yet. I'm going to go. Sorry, this has got to be quick fire. Daniel Kvyat. <laughs> Daniel Kvyat. Eh, eh, you'd think so, but nope. Um, Lando Norris. Lando Norris. Ding ding ding. Lando Norris got it at France. Nice. And oh, uh, Kimi Raikkonen hasn't got one, has he? Eh, eh, nope. Uh, no idea. It was at China. He started. He started from the back of the grid and managed to get himself his first ever championship point. Oh, uh, Albon. Yes, Albon indeed got there in the end. Yeah, on the quick fire, but slightly slower than usual. <laughs> the the kind quick, kind of quick, but. Feeling kind to give you more time. It's, it's quiz. It's like a safety car. <laughs> bringing it back to F1 related. Yeah, yeah. We're having to, yeah. we're having to stay below a delta. We can't go too quick. Okay, three more questions then. We touched right. on this earlier. Which driver scored the most fantasy points this weekend? Verstappen. You're saying Verstappen. Earlier you were saying Hamilton, but you've changed your yeah. mind. I just feel like Verstappen got pole, so that that counts for something. And Hamilton only got third on the Saturday. It, should, know it should count for something, but it doesn't actually score you that many points. You're right, but you're actually right probably more so because he got the qualifying streak. That extra five points. And the fastest him. lap. True, good point. So Verstappen finished with 45, Hamilton 44. So you're correct. Well done. Woo whoop. Okay, and now we'll put it up on screen if we can. Um, the fantasy team of the week, 
what's it called? What's it called? Uh, Dream Team. Dream Team of the Week. Is that is that uh, out? Formula One Fantasy. Hmm. Has that been released by the F1 yep. app? Okay, yeah, yeah, then, yeah. Yes. I've got a picture yeah, of it. I'll yeah. send it to you and we'll pop it will up on be screen. Up the screen then, and that's fine. Cool. Um, so, which constructors made the Formula One Fantasy Dream Team this weekend? Obviously, you haven't seen it yet. So, which constructor made the F1 Fantasy Dream Team? I believe it would be Ferrari. <laughs> Ferrari finished one point behind Mercedes. But the best, the best thing to have in your dream team, because it isn't just like the best scoring, because you have to stick to the budget. The best option to have was McLaren. Wow. Because mm, that way you could afford both Verstappen and Hamilton, who obviously were the two high scorers. Oh. Yeah, I feel like I, I, I made these questions a bit, a bit harder this week than last week. I mean, so we'll yeah, I've, 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 I've it, struggled. You, a... You've made me look like a fool. <laughs> They'll we'll never to, listen to me again. We'll have to do a spin-off one of these weeks where you quiz me and we'll see how I, I can do. Oh, make, God, make them as mean as you like. Mike's mean quiz. Yes, there we go. I love it already. Okay, last quiz question for today. And can you redeem a bit of credibility? How many drivers and constructors, how much have you been listening to me? This question really shows. How many drivers and constructors are on for streaks? Once we meet up again in Spa. Oh, in Spa? Oh, God. Yep. Right. So, so for the next race, month, in a month's time. and four. Who's on for streaks? You're saying four. Do you want to name them, or are you just going with four, and we'll see what happens? Go with four, and let's see what happens. <laughs> we'll see that happens. You get a big eh, eh, because there's actually no one on for streaks. Oh, so well. You, yeah. It's a trick question. You fooled me. Well, I said how many. You, you can just say zero. Not really a trick question, but if you want That's to play the victim card, then fine. <laughs> I'm playing a victim. I've not. I've. I crumbled under pressure. Oh okay. god. Okay. So you <laughs> scored. Hey, you do you. <laughs> right. I scored. You scored, just count it up now, five out of 12. Ooh. Oh, I mean, less than half. You know oh, what? Oh, no. I feel like Pierre Gasly, my time's up. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. This this is my last F1 Fantasy Weekly. Zach's, Zach's finding another host who can do better on the quizzes. It's no. uh, I've got to be up on my knowledge next week. I had to punish you for... for... For still being ahead of me on the head to head, I, I have to give you some I mean, tough questions. So you are bitter. I that have. is that is uh, something that has to be said. You are bitter. Bitter or just better? Oh, <laughs> definitely bitter. <laughs> yeah, probably right. Oh. And after that fantastic quiz segment, I mean, I'm sure you guys there. Let us know what you scored below. Could you beat my five out of 12? If you couldn't, then we can PR together. Uh, <laughs> You'll be a pair of peers. Oh, uh, well, let's hope there's not more than two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Oh, um, which brings us off to our final feature of the show, guys. Oh, oh, before because... we have the final feature, oh. before we have the final feature. I just want to let, let you all know that next week's quiz will be called, so it's true or false again, of course, and the true is made out in one piece, and the false is unsafe pit release. Oh, just <laughs> how it flows off. Sensational. Look, you ne- uh, unbelievable. I can't wait to play already. It feels either. like a new game, but it's the same one. But, uh, I will. I will be a little bit more kinder with the questions. I'll try for like oh. three tricky questions each week, and the rest I expect you to get. Going to say who won the race? Well, no one. There wasn't a race. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. You, you'll I'm say so Hamilton. Thinking I meant last time. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh dear. Right now we come on to um, who we love 
on the F1 grid because everyone loves him. He is everyone's favourite Finn, unless you were a fan in the 90s and you might have preferred Mika Hakkinen. And, or if you were late 2010s, you might prefer Bottas. But everyone loves Kimi Raikkonen. We're, we'll focus on that. Kimi, he's the man, the ice-cold Finn. What was his moment of the week this weekend, Zach? Well, it's funny that you refer to him as the ice cold Finn, considering his moment of the week this weekend was surely when he complained about his steering wheel being out in the sun, too hot for his hands. The ice man could not cool it down. You know, this is why people love Kimi Raikkonen. He's a man of the people. He deals with everyday problems, but, um, you know, us people in everyday life have to deal with. If it's in a hot day, we have to get into a car. I've got a black car, absorbs the heat. Gah, steering wheel's impossible to touch. And so it was for Kimi Wright as well. Uh, I just love I love how he worded it. It was so polite yet so authoritative. Like you know they're not gonna let, let that happen again for him, but it, it was it was it was polite, it wasn't aggressive, it was just oh just classic Kimmy. Yeah, that's brilliant. I think also it might have been this week I shared it on Twitter. We you guys have got a bonus moment where it was basically like I think a journalist asked him is there anything in your Alfa Romeo contract that stops you doing dangerous sports? And he's like, if they whine, I said I'll leave. <laughs> yeah. So I, I do I do what I like. If they whine, then I leave. It's as simple as that. I was like, going, brilliant. <laughs> Kimmy, he's earned the right to do it. And he's literally proving that he's like, I can walk away. You need me more than you. I need you. Yeah, you're right, Kimmy. You, you can do what you want. And then I think attached to the article was a video of him climbing the side of a house before jumping into a swimming pool, which is just you don't get this sort of stuff from Lando, Max. They, they're funny guys. They, you know, they're nice. I think Carlos Sainz is getting in on their cute little gaming stream thing. But Kimmy Raikkonen's unique. He yeah, is he does what he wants. And like no other. <laughs> right. And that, guys, uh, somehow without even a preview for the next race, we've managed to be going for an hour here because you you guys just can't get enough of this or you switched off and snooze. Well, I think, I think we, we, can't, we can't get enough of this. We are truly we F1 are, fanatics. We, we are. And... We just keep talking, and we really hope that people keep listening. Um, but if, if you have actually, if you have made it this far, congratulations. Well done. We uh, Comment below that you've made it this far. You've made it to the end. You've made it through this journey with us because it is a roller coaster journey. We, we go off on tangents. We come back. We go off on another one. We come back. It's... It's a roller coaster of emotions, Zach. I I always feel, you know, emotionally drained after our F1 fancy because we put our, you know, heart and soul into this. We really have. We 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 burn out our tires. I mean, I'm gonna cry myself to sleep tonight with that five out of twelve score. <laughs> and so you should. I I'm should sure. hang my head in shame. I'll be leaving now. But guys. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back to a proper round off close, before we do all the kind of, you know, the usuals, likes and subscribes, which we'll talk you through, is we will give you a little bit of a round up. So obviously it is the summer break. We are on vacation from F1 and we are distraught. But don't you worry. F1 Fanatics is here to kind of be that shoulder to cry on when you miss F1 and the weekly podcast will run every week. So next week, we will be almost doing a kind of F1 fantasy mid-season review. If kind of the uh, we'll look through the drivers and the constructors from mm -hmm. there. And the following week, we'll be doing a winners and losers. So kind of similar, but we'll figure out how to kind of make it different and more interesting and 
probably they'll still be this odd rambling on uh, from there. Then, oh, what was our what was our final week? Ah, final week we were doing versus battles slash almost predictions for the second half of the season. So like yeah. Hamilton versus Verstappen versus Vettel, who who to have uh, going into it, and then guys, the wait will be over. We'll be there. The the kind of pain will be over. We will have the return of F1. And what a place to return to Spa. What a circuit Spa is to go to. And love that. And the Ferrari should actually do pretty well there. Um, but we won't mm-hmm. talk about Spa until near the time. But that is just a rundown there. Me and Ash have got our... Um, this comes out on Wednesday. So you'll be listening to this on a Wednesday or whenever you're listening to it. But it comes out Wednesday of this week. And then on the Thursday, me and Ash uh, is full race review of the Hungry GP will be out. And in that, we'll also talk through our full summer schedule of videos because we've got a busy one for you guys. We are we're not going anywhere. We we are just bombarding you with videos. Just watch this. Watch that. Watch, keep watching. Love us, please. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, if you liked what we did, give us a thumbs up. Uh, Zach, what would be our what do you want them to comment on this week? Comment on how they scored in the quiz. Comment on who they turboed in fantasy. And or and if you want, if you're feeling hungry for some stats, comment. Give me a stat, Zach, and I'll drop you a stat just like this stat. Raikkonen raced his 16,000 F1 lap at Hungary. I mean, that's fantastic. Boom. Where else do you get this type of amazing information that enriches your life that somehow uh, the, seems... The to internet. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah, where where else? We're, we're bigging ourselves up here, Zach. You don't want to tell them where everyone else they're getting it. Anyway, um, subscribe to the channel, guys. We've got plenty of F1 content uh, coming out. We love doing this. Um, your support's great, so if you enjoy what we do don't forget to click that subscribe button click on the bell notifications because that will let you know when we release a video and like i said there are quite a few of them coming over this summer break uh guys it's been it's been emotional it's it's been great it's well it's it's an f1 fantasy world we're living in zach i think the best way to describe it Definitely, definitely. We've laughed, we've cried. Yeah. But, but always through it all. I we lost will. a friend. Yeah, yeah, he lost a friend. He lost a <laughs> quiz. Well, that, that seems a very long time ago that I lost a friend. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, okay, right, we'll, we'll try this because we never seem to do this in sync. We, we, we'll, we'll count down again. Our usual sign-off. So... Remember F1 fans? Okay, you got it. We'll go. Should we go on three? Yeah, all right. All right. One, two, three. Keep Keep racing. Oh, oh, we've come. That was probably the worst one yet, wasn't it? (laughs) Right. Keep keep racing. Keep racing, guys. Yep. That's our catchphrase. Um, We haven't worked out how to do it together yet. But we're getting there, you know. This is this is episode three. One day, one day, yeah, oh, exactly, yeah. Episode three, baby people, steps. People will be like, oh, they peaked at three. I don't really want to listen anymore because we're coming every week. So we need a peek at like episode something. Right. Anyway, um, we're <laughs> we're we're still in now. Uh, see you later. Have a great thing. See you next week for another. Yeah fancy zach as always thank you for joining on the podcast it is always great for your stats and insight into it and um guys yeah, thank pleasure. you yeah thank you for joining us on the journey we we keep coming at you yeah keep racing keep racing <laughs> all right guys see ya